Hello, my name's Mark and I am Chico Tutor. And I'm here with Practical Machinists to finish off this series. So, so far we've had 11 different videos of programming this part. This is the 12th and final one. And today we're going to look at back boring that chamfer and finish boring the main bore. Okay, so let's jump straight into it. So we're gonna start off with our search function number, our N10, also known as a number function there, and an operator's note describing roughly what we're gonna do. So just bore should be enough to let the operator know this is the boring sequence. We can also add some tooling information there if we want to. Okay, so next up is the safety line. It puts the machine into a safe state, ready to run the sequence, no matter where we stopped the program before this. And now we're doing our tool call. So we're calling tool 10 this time and offset position 10 there. So T10 10 is going to bring our tool down into the center line position because we have MO6 that follows it and that's our tool change M code. So this line is going to select our tool and bring it down ready to start cutting. So the next line there is our spindle speed. So I'm just giving it an 1800 RPM uh, spindle speed there, plus MO3 turns the spindle on in a clockwise direction. So next up here we have our first movement line, our G00 line. So what we're doing here is we're moving down to um, the start diameter of that chamfer at the front there, that 45 degree chamfer by 5 64ths. And then we've come down to 50 thousandths of an inch away from the front face. Now we're turning the coolant on. So now we're coming down to 10 foul away from the front face and rapid. I like to do my rapids on two separate lines, as you probably know by now. So this is bringing it down to our start position. And then this line uh, machines that chamfer for us. So we're coming down to X, which is the same diameter as our finished bore that we've finished boring. And our Z there is minus 78.1 thousandths of an inch. Now, how did I come up with that Z figure? Okay, so that's where we need to look into a little bit of maths. So let's go ahead and start working out how I calculated that. So the reason I skipped ahead before I spoke about the maths, we've got three lines here, all with values highlighted, and all of those are relevant, and all of those we need to work out using maths. So we need to plot the beginning point of that chamfer. If that chamfer continued 10 thousandth of an inch away, because we started off um, with 10 foul away from that face. Okay, so let's have a look how we're going to approach this. So we're going to start off by looking at that chamfer. Now 5 64ths is equal to 78.1 thousandths of an inch. So you can see on our last Z move there, that's where I got that figure from. That is um, 5 64ths into that chamfer. So that gives us that distance in Z there. So to work out the X dimension of the beginning of that chamfer, we need to take our angle, which we know is 45 degrees, and the length is 5 64ths. So we've got to times that 5 64ths by two, which gives us 0.156 um, thousandths of an inch. So and we've got two tenths there as well. So we times that angle by two, because in X on a lathe, we work in diameters and not radiuses. So once we know our end point, now that's the end point on the face of the part, we still have to add that initial 10 thousandths of an inch clearance that we had in Z. Now to add that clearance, we need to look at this little diagram down here. So we know that um, our triangle there is 5 64ths. So that means, where it's a 45 degree triangle, it's 5 64ths in Z and X. But of course we have to multiply X by two because we're working in diameters, not radiuses. So now we can work out that extra 10 thousandths of an inch clearance is 10 thousandths of an inch because it's also 45 degrees, remember? So it's 10 thousandths of an inch in X and Z. So of course we have to double the X. So that gives us the initial clearance of 10 thousandths of an inch. It would be 20 foul in X because X is doubled um, because we move in diameters, not radiuses. And so that 10 foul times two would be 20 foul. So if we add that to the start of the angle, the start of that 45 degrees right on that face there, which we know is 0 0.9432, we add 20 foul to that. And then we know our X start position with that clearance is 9, 0.9632. So we're just adding 20 thousandths of an inch onto the X there, where it is 10 thousandths of an inch clearance in Z. So again, we just double it. 
Now, if you want to know more about the maths I use when programming G code, I have a nine hour maths course over on my website. So pop over to gcodetutor.com if you need to brush up more on your machine shop maths. Okay, so now we can carry on with the rest of the program. Now we understand how the maths to calculate that initial chamfer was done. So now we've moved into position our program as at the end point of that chamfer after machining it. We now need to go to full depth in Z. We left five foul on there when we machined it with the U drill for a bit of, um, to leave a bit of meat on there for our cleanup process with the finish ball. And that's now what we're taking off. So we're coming down to the final depth there of Z minus 0.670. So once we're down to full size in Z, we can face off that face internally on X. So now I'm coming down to X minus 10 foul from the center line. So all we're doing now is we're facing off that uh, face there inside the bore. And I'm coming just past the center line into that bore when we finish off. Now we that other bore there is quarter of an inch. So we could have come down to say maybe X 0.2 and that would have been just as good also. So we're coming down, we've we've got some clearance now, our cutting edge of our tool is not touching material anymore, so now we can back it out by using G00, Z half an inch, and we're gonna turn the coolant off. So I've just pulled the tool out to a safe rapid distance. Now we've finished our internal finish bore. So now the tool is out to a safe distance, we can now send it home to our G53 position with X0, Z0. And that's often our tool change position. So we can safely leave the tool there while we turn the spindle off using MO5 and then an optional stop MO1. So that's our final sequence of this boring sequence there. The MO1 final optional stop, we could quite easily change to M00 and have a complete stop there. And we'd probably want to add M30 at the end of there to tell the machine that's the end of our sequence and the end of the program and to rewind the program back to the start ready for the next part. So that's how we write a complete part using G-code on a CNC lathe. Now, quite often, this is a lot faster than firing up your CAD CAM machine because these programs here, these clips of programs, we can copy and paste them and edit. So if you imagine how quickly we can copy and paste this into another program and just change some of those X and Z values, how fast we can write programs with G-code. In fact, often I can have my machine up and running before the guy on the CAD CAM machine has even finished its coffee. So that's how we program a full part using G-code. If you want to know more, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have a whole range of courses, not only teaching G-code, but also computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacture, machine shop, maths. And I also have a huge course on a manual lathe. It's a mini apprenticeship, teaches you everything you need to know about manual turning. So I've got a whole bunch of courses over on gcodetutor.com. Why not go check them out?